For a good while, I've been expanding my taste in electronic music. I started out listening to the newer Atmos drum and bass artists and kind of been working backwards listening to proper breakcore artists like Alec Empire, Igor, Gorshit, and Venetian Snares. Now, I haven't turned into a snob like the worst on the breakcore subreddit, but I have a better grasp on what I like from the genre. And if it wasn't obvious already, I'm talking about drum and bass. I still like some of the simpler DB songs, but knowing what's out there, my standards have kind of gone up. I don't really check often for new music, usually listening to new albums months after release. I think the only thing that gets my attention nowadays are albums from my favorite artists and even that's kind of rare looking at you cardi but that was until something i didn't think would ever happen occurred sewer slut came back now when i got more into electronic music back in 2021 when sewer slut was arguably at the height of her popularity i enjoyed her quite a bit granted i only listened to two albums but the highlights from them really stood out she had a unique sound great production and for better or for worse inspired a lot of artists to get into dnb and have other from that niche scene to gain traction but then she quit I'm not going to get into the many reasons why that happened since there are other people more dedicated than me who did that already. I think this video here is very solid and it gives a relatively fair view of things. Just so people know, I'm not letting that affect my judgement of her music and I think other people shouldn't either. But I can't control what you like so do what you do. Anyway, to give context, it's almost been three years since the last Sewer album and in that time you'd hope that she'd been cooking something insane. Considering the note her final album ended on, surely she'll come back with something even better, right? I mean, that's not a guarantee, but we hope so, right? Eventually, we got the official soundtrack to Agony. Uh, wrong one. Yeah, that one. Some artist named Agony OST came out of the mist making solid house music, kind of in the vein of Burial's Untrue. To my knowledge, Agony didn't gain much traction until they remixed Sewer Slut's song Purple Hearts in Her Eyes, and Sewer Slut reposted it. Now, there's a lot of speculation on whether June is Agony since other people, myself included, feel that they sound very similar. For me, it's their distinct use of ambience that gives it away for me. Maybe I should review Agony OST. They're pretty good, actually. Anyway, there have been other happenings that have occurred in which people thought she was coming back, but I feel this was the catalyst. But it hasn't been confirmed if they're the same person at the time of writing this video. Regardless, Sewer Slut was active after years of speculation on her whereabouts, and that got people excited. Soon we got confirmation that something was coming, and finally we got Sewer Slut Presents Synthony Part 1 in May of 2024, followed by Part 2 in August of the same year. Nowadays, my outlook on Sewer Slut's music is mixed. On one hand, I think she has a very unique sound, and her use of ambience is something I haven't heard much being done within the modern DB space, at least prior to her. Her mixing and production in general are really good when compared to her contemporaries and those she went on to inspire. However, I feel a common problem with her music is that a good amount of her tracks are too long and don't have much progression in them. There are many exceptions to that, and I know she fits into the category of atmospheric drum and bass, but I like when things actually happen in my songs, you know? There is also the fact that she only sticks to one in Encompassing sound. It would be dishonest if I called her a one trick pony, so I'll call her a three trick pony. Mind you, it's not a bad thing that she sticks to her sound, but I can only listen to so much atmosphere in June's style of drum and bass, hard style, and house until I get bored. Like a lot of the songs just kind of sound the same. This is more true with her earlier albums, and as time went on, it got better. I've been spoiled by electronic artists of the past, and contemporaries of June I like more. So, going into Synthony Part 1, I had high hopes for what was in store. I mean, she's really been putting in work in terms of the promotional run for Synthony, so let's see if the hype matches the music. Theme of Synthony keeps up the Sewer Slut tradition of starting off albums with an ambient track. This time, it's a lot more minimal and calming, but ultimately not as interesting as previous intros. But it's an ambient track, and I can't expect too much from them. Death of the Endless is an Atmos DNB track that really has good production, but doesn't have much variance, and the 5 minute runtime doesn't help it from being dragged out. Lychee Ice, in comparison, is too minutes long and doesn't wear out its welcome even with its minimal variance between moments in the song. The bouncy vocal chops are a favorite of mine here. Flickering in the Gloom is another Atmos DNB track with the VTuber Project Melody apparently providing additional vocals and production. I can't really tell where this is apparent. Hell, I didn't even know Project Melody had music, let alone any production chops, but considering my track record with my enjoyment of VTuber music, I had a feeling I wouldn't really enjoy this. I don't know much about V Shoujo lore and how this came to be. I just like the kind of be tubing. But anyway, the Synthony track is good and thankfully doesn't drag on too long. Grinding of Teeth is the heaviest track on the album, being more akin to House or Trance. I also want to say Gabber, since it's also in the tags, but I don't know enough about Gabber to not get massacred by the skinheads. Can any Gabblers confirm if this is real Gabber? 
that was dumb, I'm sorry. It's not something I'd listen to usually, but the track is over quickly and remains interesting for its runtime. Monolithic Science Tsunami is another atmospheric drum and bass track, but this time there's a beat switch which is appreciated. Otherwise, my enjoyment is similar to the other Atmos DMV tracks here. Overall, I think part one is a solid comeback album with a lot of interesting moments, but it still falls into the many source slut trappings of some tracks being too long and not being too interesting to sustain the runtime. To be honest, those trappings are very much a preference thing, and more people like the repetition and soaking in the atmosphere. The overall cleaner production I feel is somewhat of a detriment since I like the edge that the rawness of the source of songs had, but once again, personal preferences. Moving on to Synthony Part 2, I was hoping that more interesting things would happen here considering that Synthony 1 sounded more of the same from the Sewer Slut era. Looking into the intro 9 red squares, nothing is really going on here, even for an ambient track. For the most part, it's an ambient drone that goes on for 3.5 minutes. Thankfully, the dullness is broken by Dancing Dots, which, guess what? is an Atmos DB track that has a few switch-ups here and there, but mainly sticks to the main ideas in its verse and bridge sections. Basically, it doesn't change up that much and it goes a little longer than it should. The track System Link is an Atmos DB track that, okay, this joke is kinda getting boring, but this is the album's equivalent to Lychee Eyes, as it's repetitive and doesn't overstay its welcome. I can also say that for the track Oublier and Ecstasy, but for the second it's a house track that doesn't have much switch-ups. However, I feel Matul Heads is the exception to the rule, and ends up being my favorite track from either of the two EPs. It's long, sure, but but there are enough changeups throughout in the 6 minute runtime to keep it interesting. It does go back to repeating ideas for long periods of time, but it's more unique sections like the addition of an Amen break and a full on drum breakdown in the latter half make all the difference. But once again, the album just kind of falls into the source slut trappings. I feel a similar way to both albums, but I prefer the first EP for being consistently good over the seconds being more sporadic in quality. I know I'm constantly bringing up comparisons to Synthony and Sewer Slut, but I think it's unavoidable when talking about the two EPs. Synthony just sounds like a duller Sewer Slut. Yes, the production is clean and technically everything is sound, but it just doesn't hit the same. The emotional weight isn't really there and for me it's just not as interesting. But obviously there's a reason for that. We're almost three years detached from the last Sewer Slut album and Synthony feels more like a self-reflection of that previous era. It's less pain and more melancholic here. And while that's a reasonable way to look at it, the art just doesn't measure up to what came before. At the moment, I'm not super sold on Synthony, but it's very early into the new discography and a more cohesive and progressive full-length album could really show off the potential Synthony has. I really want to like these EPs, but it's just not doing it for me. It's absolutely a preference thing, so if you like what I dislike about these albums, then more power to you. I think these are above average electronic albums, but nothing more than that. So if I had to give a rating to both EPs, these are pure 6 out of 10s. 5 would be a mid score, and that would be dishonest based on the technical quality of each song, but anything higher than 6 would imply that it's consistently interesting to listen to, in any context other than background music. So for me, the EPs are pretty good, but temper your expectations. If you're more receptive to ambience, then you'll like it. But if you're looking for more interesting songs, there isn't much to chew on. And this is where I rank them in terms of the wider Sewer Slut discography. I bet this won't cause any discourse. That's all I have to say, and uh, bye.